In this video, I want to talk about the normal equation and non-invertibility. This is a uh, somewhat more advanced concept, but it's something that I've often been asked about, and so I want to talk about here and address it here. But this is a somewhat more advanced concept, so uh, feel free to consider this optional material. Um, and uh, it's a phenomenon that uh, you may run into that may be somewhat useful to understand. But even if you don't understand the, the normal equation and uh, linear regression, you should really get that to work okay. Here's the issue. For those of you that are maybe somewhat more familiar with linear algebra, um, what some students have asked me is, when computing this uh, theta equals x transpose x inverse x transpose y, what if the matrix x transpose x is non-invertible? So for those of you that know a bit more linear algebra, you may know that you know, only some matrices are invertible, and some matrices do not have an inverse. We call those non-invertible matrices singular or uh, degenerate matrices. The issue or the problem of x transpose x being non-invertible should happen pretty rarely. And um, in Octave, if you implement this to compute theta, it turns out that this will actually do the right thing. Um, I'm getting a little technical now, uh, and, and I don't want to go into the details, but Octave has two functions for inverting matrices. One is called pinf, and the other is called inf. And uh, the differences between these two are somewhat technical. One's called the pseudo-inverse, one's called the inverse. But um, you can show mathematically that so long as you use the pinf function, then this will, this will actually compute the value of theta that you want, even if x transpose x is non-invertible. The specific details between you know, what is the difference between pinf and what is, what is inf, that's uh, somewhat advanced numerical computing concepts that I don't really want to get into. But um, I thought in this optional video, I'll give, try to give you a little bit of intuition about what it means for x transpose x to be non-invertible for those of you uh, that know a bit more linear algebra and might be interested. I'm not going to prove this mathematically, but if x transpose x is non-invertible, there are usually two most common causes for this. The first cause is if somehow in your learning problem you have redundant features. Concretely, if you're trying to predict housing prices, and if x1 is the size of the house in feet and square feet, and x2 is the size of the house in square meters, then you know one meter is equal to 3.28 feet, uh, rounded up, rounded to two decimals, and so your two features will always satisfy the constraint that x1 equals 3.28 squared times x2. And uh, you can show, for, for those of you that are this is somewhat advanced linear algebra now, but if you're an expert in linear algebra, you can actually show that if your two features are related via a linear equation like this, then the matrix x transpose x will be non-invertible. The second thing that can cause x transpose x to be non-invertible is if you're training, if you're trying to lear run a learning algorithm with a lot of features. Concretely, if m is less than or equal to n. For example, if you imagine that you have m equals 10 training examples, but you have n equals 100 features, then you're trying to fit a parameter vector theta, which is you know, n plus 1 dimensional. So it's 101 dimensional. You're trying to fit 101 parameters from just 10 training examples. And um, this turns out to sometimes work, but to not always be a good idea, because uh, as we'll see later, you might not have enough data if you have only 10 examples to fit you know, 100 or 101 parameters. We'll see later in this course why this might be too little data to fit these, this many parameters. But um, commonly, what we do then, if, if m is less than n, is to you know, see if we can either delete some features or to use a technique called regularization, which is something that uh, we'll talk about later in this course as well, that will kind of let you fit a lot of parameters, use a lot of features, even if you have a relatively small training set. But this, this, this regularization will be a later topic in this course. But to summarize, if um, ever you find that x transpose x is singular, or, or, or alternatively you find it's non-invertible, what uh, I would recommend you do is first look at your features and see if you have redundant features like this x1, x2, you know, being linearly dependent or being a linear function of each other like so. And if you do have redundant features and if you just you know, delete one of these features, you really don't need both of these features. If you just delete one of these features, that would solve your non-invertibility problem. 
And um, so I would first think through my features and check if any are redundant, and if so, then you know, d keep deleting redundant features until they're no longer redundant. And uh, if your features are not redundant, I would check if I might have too many features. And if that's the case, I would either delete some features if I can bear to use fewer features, or else I would consider using regularization, which is this topic that we'll talk about later. So that's it for the normal equation and uh, what it means for uh, if the matrix X transpose X is non-invertible. But this is a problem that you should run, that hopefully you run into pretty rarely. And if you just implement it in Octave using, P in, using the PIN function, uh, which is called the pseudo-inverse function. So if you use a different linear algebra library, you know, it's called a pseudo-inverse. Um, but that implementation should just do the right thing, uh, even if x transpose x is non-invertible, which should happen pretty rarely anyway, so this should not be a problem for most implementations of linear regression.